Hi everyone, welcome to Dragon Image. Today I'm here to show you how to balance the uh, Helix, uh, Helix Junior Gimbal. Uh, for all you people out there, the Helix Junior Gimbal is basically just a very simple gimbal system designed for you know anything from an A7S all the way up to something like the Blackmagic Cinema Camera. Okay, so here we have it. Um, basically, camera goes here, battery goes straight at the back. So what I'll do is move this around like this. Battery just clips on in. in the middle. 18 volts, and then just clicks on there. The battery system they use is very, very simple. Um, it gives you approximately two hours worth of battery life, and all you need to do to charge it is plug it into a charger. Um, so once we've got the battery on there, now we can attach the camera. Um, I'm attaching the camera to this central section, so that allows me to actually slide the camera to the left and the right. So when I'm balancing it, because DSLRs tend to be a little bit heavier on the one side, I can actually bring the camera slightly over. All I do, standard tripod, quarter inch screw, straight into the bottom. I start off on that one side. So since I kind of let go of it, you'll see that it's heavy going in that direction. So what I can do is just slightly move it over. Tighten it off again. If you were doing this, if you hadn't had the same kind of camera and lens you're always using, I recommend getting like a quick release system, like a sliding plate, um, which would allow you not to have to reposition this each time. And now I can kind of put it there and kind of see. So I can kind of see it's a little bit bottom heavy and it's a little bit, maybe just that side slightly. But before I go through the whole, ex the whole point of balancing the entire thing, I'm just gonna attach my monitor. So I'm using a Rouge monitor today and the reason that I'm attaching it to it now is because if I were to balance the camera perfectly and then attach the monitor, it would completely throw off all the work I'd already done. So the idea is to kind of get everything the way uh, you would have it when you're shooting. So for instance, the battery's in the camera, the card is in the camera, the lens cap is actually off the lens. I'm choosing not to use a hood at this point. And so now I'm just attaching the monitor. So this is an optional extra from Helix. And this just allows you to mount a monitor straight at the back of the camera. And I'm going slightly off to one side there. There's the nice little, again, quarter inch screw. And what this does is it actually attaches to the hot shoe. So this on that. And I grab the appropriate Allen key and just tighten that off. Um, unlike other gimbal systems, what this allows me to do, when you're actually tilting, the monitor will tilt with the camera. So obviously the camera is designed to stay level. So with other sim systems like the Ronin or the Movi, what happens is when you tilt the handles, the monitor tilts with it. Whereas in this case, the monitor is completely uh, kind of related to the actual camera. And because I'm gonna be using it with the hood, I'll open up the hood now. So if I let go of it, you can see that's falling off to that one side now. And again, I have two options. I can either move the actual monitor over a bit, or I can actually move the entire setup over to one side. Uh, in this particular case, I might just choose to move the monitor because it is kind of an easier thing than having to reposition the camera with everything kind of attached. So I can just kind of move that over. There we go. Still kind of falling off to that one side. That's about right there. Okay. So now what I can do is, I'll just make sure all these top ones are tight because you don't want to have to find this out later when you've balanced it all and then suddenly something moves. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can kind of put it that way. If it stays there, that's balanced. If it didn't stay there, for instance, if it went back to like that, then I would be bottom heavy and I'd have to move these ones to fix that problem. So by releasing these, I can slide the camera up and down, lowering or increasing the weight in proportion to this axis here. So, but at this point, it looks like that's pretty much perfect. Um, and now what I'll do is I'll just show you the forward and backward balance. So with the forward and backwards, it's basically these two screws here and they work off this axis. So what I do is I just quickly kind of lift it and I can kind of feel that the pressure of this 
is kind of going forward like that. So it's back heavy. So what I do is I just loosen up these and slide the whole unit forward. Don't be shy to go a little bit more than you think because you can always kind of go far, come back. And this means that you're kind of working in halves instead of having to kind of make micro adjustments constantly. So it's still a bit back heavy. So again, it's a nice big kind of chunk. And now I can kind of see it's leaning forward, it's falling backwards. So what that tells me is that this is pretty much okay, but now my top and bottom weight based on this axis here is actually a little bit top heavy. And so with these, you've got these two little blue screws on the sides here, and there's little numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just unscrew that a bit and lift this one up. And so the idea with the numbers is that obviously there's two of them, so they have to match from one side to the other. And these screws kind of pop out and move. So let me go to about, what's that? Three, two. And then I'll go to this side here, which again has the same numbers. And go to three, two as well. Okay, so I've got a three, two. So if I've gone too far, it will kind of stay flat. If I haven't got far enough, ooh. Okay, so that's pretty close. What I've noticed is that it's a little bit back heavy still. So again, just releasing these two here and just sliding that forward ever so slightly. One thing I have noticed, make sure that my lens is on right focal length, lift it up. A little bit back and because I'm a little bit back but I'm kind of all the way back on this one here I would have two options I could move the camera forward slightly or because I'm using this monitor mount I can loosen these up and actually slide this monitor in a little bit more so I've got a little bit of space there to kind of move let's loosen up those and just Slide that in. If I slide it in kind of to a point where I'm not hitting anything, that gives me a little bit of room to play with at the bottom. So again, tighten these all up. It's a nice rigid system. Uh, you could try using mini friction arms, but we tried that and we found that when you did tilts and stuff like that, it would unscrew or go loose in a particular way, whereas this is designed to be very rigid. Okay, so again, lift it up. Well, there we go. Okay. so. One thing I did forget to add while I was doing it was uh, this little guy here. So unlike um, other gimbal systems, the actual flexibility of the cable doesn't really matter uh, when using a helix gimbal. The reason for that is that the monitor is actually on the same axis. So there's no pulling. So I just have to find this one. HDMI in, straight into there. And so as long as you continually to run up the cable, so luckily I've got like a little cable tie here. That's just, gets it out of the way. Then this one, straight to the side. You could obviously use any monitor, this is just one that we happen to have lying around. Luckily it comes with a hood, which is great when shooting outdoors. Okay, so I can kind of just check that that cable hasn't done too much to my balance. I've noticed here that when I go down this way, the cable is actually hitting. So I can kind of pull that a little bit just to make sure that's kind of got a free range of motion. Um, it is hitting a little bit here, but that's within my kind of play and also the cables here. Okay, so now that I've done that, just double check the lift. Beautiful, and I can turn it on. Okay, there we go. So now that's all kind of balanced up and ready to go. Let me just put it down, turn all the devices on. So you can notice this one's doing this. It's not, it's just the fact that it doesn't uh, communicate. I just turn this on, turn this on, make sure it's in video. 
I'll stick it in auto for the sake of being able to see what we're getting. Yep, and there we go. So, turn that on. Um, if you've used the Helix before, you'll know that on the right handle, it actually controls my tilt, whereas the left handle does nothing. Yeah, and that's basically balanced. So now, for instance, I can have a look at the back screen and physically be able to see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And that's it. If you do find that you're getting a little bit of shake or something in the camera, occasionally it could just be a profile setting. So on the Helix, you've got three profiles preset, which is a small camera, and you've got medium camera, and then you've got the large camera set up. So depending on how much weight you're going to put on there, that's the standard setting. I think this one's probably a medium kind of weight load, so I've changed it to profile two, and that just gives me a little bit more kind of weight. Let me just turn this off and turn it back on just to kind of reset it. Oh, maybe a bit too much. Yep. One, two, one, two. Okay, there we go, actually. This is probably a better profile. So you saw then it was just a matter of selecting the profile that was most closely related to what my setup is. But in saying that, I can go in and do a custom profiles and you can get an application for Android or iPhone to actually control those settings as well. And uh, there you have it.